Welcome into the video. I'm your tech guide, Wayne. Today I'm going to show you some of my favorite tips and tricks and hidden features on the Samsung Galaxy A54. This phone does so many things that you cannot keep count. There's so many amazing things that it does and I just want to teach you a couple of my favorite uh, things that it does and some things you'll need to change in your settings to make sure you're having the best experience with this phone. So make sure you watch the video all the way to the end so you don't miss any of these really cool tips and tricks. Let's jump right in. The first thing I want to show you is a cool feature in the camera that's going to make it easier for you to take selfies um, with your voice. So let's go to the camera and in the upper left corner go to the settings wheel and from here we're going to go down to shooting methods and turn on voice commands. Now when you turn on voice commands this will allow you to take uh, a selfie with your voice. All you have to do is say one of these commands here. So you can say smile, cheese, capture, or shoot. Uh, you can even say record video and it will automatically trigger the camera to start recording. Let me show you really quickly. So we're in the camera here. I'm going to change it over to the front camera just so you can see what uh, the camera sees. And I'm going to say one of those hot words, cheese. The cool thing too is it will start a timer, I believe a three second timer, so you'll have some time to count down. So you know those moments when you're holding the camera and everybody's ready and sometimes it's hard to reach the shutter button? Well guess what? You don't have to worry about that. Just yell one of those hot words like cheese and it's automatically going to count down and capture that picture for you. So that is our first hidden feature and just so you know, there's so many amazing ones to go. If you didn't know that one, make sure you bump that like button. Okay, here's going to be our next tip. Now again, the video is going to be a combination of tips and tricks and hidden features. So I'm going to say tip, but some of these are going to be tips. Some of them are going to be hidden features. So on this phone, uh, one, one of the cool things you get with higher end Samsung phones is what is called the app edge. Now this is on the home screen. You'll see this little gray bar right here and just sliding over from the edge of the screen onto the screen will open up this app edge and allow you to get to apps quicker. Now at the top here, it's going to show you the last three apps that you used and it'll keep them quick at your fingertips. And these five apps you can actually change to whatever your favorite apps are. So we're going to come down and tap on this little pencil here. And I want to change these five apps and I want to set specific apps to be my favorite so I can get to them faster. So each app has a little uh, minus in the corner and tapping on that minus will get rid of those apps. I'm going to get rid of those two. I want to keep my messages. I want to keep YouTube and I want to keep Google Chrome. But you know what? I want to add Amazon because I love to shop on Amazon. So I tapped on that. Amazon is now on our list. And I can come down here and you know what, maybe you want to have your email be that last app right there. Now we have five shortcuts and if you come up to the top here in the upper right corner, tap on these three dots, you can also change the setting so that it won't show your last three apps here. If I turn this off, guess what? Now I have more room to add more apps. So guess what? You may want to add, let's see, your LinkedIn and your Google Maps. And you may want to add your phone as well. So guess what? This is a total right now of eight apps. You don't have to stop at eight. You can have even more than that. We can keep going. But as you keep adding, it's going to make the list even bigger. So you'll have more room. So now when you swipe like this, just swipe onto the screen. Now those apps are always right at your fingertips and easy to get to for you to use them. So that's one thing. Here is the second thing. So there are more of these little things that are called edges that you can access. So if we swipe down from the top, oh, excuse me. If we swipe over just like that and we tap on this little settings wheel that's off to the side. Now, if you notice, it already has gone away. So you have to tap it quickly or it goes away. Swipe over, tap on this settings wheel. This will take us to our panel menu and it will allow you to enable a few other panels that are there. So the people uh, edge panel is the other one I recommend that you use. Now you'll see there's a bunch in here you can play around with. 
Take some time, look through here, see if there's more you like. Also, if you tap on the Galaxy Store, it'll give you a list of even more panels that are available. So spend, spend some time and play around in there. I'm gonna hit the home button, swipe over, and now if I swipe again like this, now I have what is called the people edge. I'm gonna tap allow, allow contacts, and now I can add contacts in here. So guess what? Maybe your mom, your sister, your cousin, whoever it is, hit the plus and you can search for their contact in your phone. You add that person and now you'll have them as a shortcut. You'll be able to, I didn't add anybody for the sake of the video, but you'll have little pop-ups of your contacts. All you're gonna do is just tap on their picture and then it will allow you to call that person or text that person. So this is just another cool feature that you'll wanna enable so that now your contacts are gonna be easier to get to and to uh, communicate with because they'll be in your app edge. Now just swiping will allow you to jump back and forth between your app edge and your people edge. So that is our next tip. Let's move on to our next one. I wanna show you how to run two apps at one time. This is one of my favorite features. I use it all the time. So I'm gonna have YouTube at the top of the screen and at the bottom of the screen, I wanna have Google Chrome open as I wanna be able to search the web while I'm watching a YouTube video. So tap on your Google folder. To do this is super easy. You just need to open each app first, just like this. So I'm gonna open YouTube right then hit the home button now i'm going to open up google chrome hit the home button now i'm going to tap on my recent apps button in the bottom left corner right here i want to swipe over to youtube because i want youtube to be at the top of the screen i have to go to youtube first tap on the icon and then tap open in split screen view that's going to move youtube to the top of the screen and then i'm going to come down here tap on google chrome and now, guess what? I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna play this video here. So guess what? This video is gonna start going to the top of the screen. And also, one more thing, for videos, if you tap on the video and tap on this button here, it'll bring it open into full screen so it can use all that top real estate. So guess what? My video is playing at the top and at the bottom, I'm I'm in Google Chrome, but or actually, I, yeah, I'm in Google Chrome, but I'm on the Amazon website. So I'm actually browsing through Amazon shopping while I'm watching the video. So this is a really cool way to multitask, run two apps at one time. This is also gonna be supported in the landscape position. So if you rotate the phone, it will allow you to continue to uh, interact with one side while the other side is going. If you tap on these three dots in the center of the screen, and hit this button here, it will allow you to move them to different sides of the screen as well. Now when you're all done with split screen and you wanna go back to full screen with one app, you're just gonna put your finger on the three dots in the center and just drag to the right, and that will take you out of the split screen and back to again full screen mode just like that. All right, so now you know how to multitask. Next, let's talk about another really cool feature called the quick launch camera. This is gonna allow you to launch the camera anytime to make sure you don't miss any important moments. Now, all you have to do is double tap on the power button two times, just like this. It's gonna automatically open the camera and allow you to take a picture. Cheese! We're gonna use that first tip. Cheese! There we go. We're gonna use that first tip as well, kind of mix those two together. Now, even if the phone is off, you can still double tap. It'll automatically wake up the phone and take you right to the camera so you can take a picture. Now, even if you have a password on the phone, it will also bypass the password and allow you to take a picture. Now, if you wanna get in to see the picture after, you will need to unlock the phone to be able to change the, or to see the picture. Now, this is a really cool feature, but, some of you might say, oh, that's pretty cool, but you know what? I would rather be able to do something different with that double tap. And you know what? That's gonna move into our next tip. We're gonna show you how to change the double tap function to launch a different app instead of launching the camera. So you're gonna swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe down a second time, and when you do that, you'll notice you have a power button at the top of the screen, 
FYI, this is a digital power button, so tapping it will actually take you to the options to power off your phone, restart it, or open your emergency call function. It'll also give you a pop-up for the side key settings. Now tap on the side key settings here, and this will allow you to change what double pressing the power button actually does. So right now it launches the quick launch camera feature, but we can change it and just say, hey, I just wanted to open an app. So now I can say, you know what? I would rather be able to double tap that and go right to my text messages. Well, now if I double tap the power button, it'll open up my text messages. So really cool, you can change that button. Let me show you again how to do it. Swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe down again, tap on the power button here, and then go to side key settings. And now you can say, hey, you know what? Instead of messages, I'm gonna tap settings here. I wanna pick a different app. I would rather that launch my voicemail, for example. Now, it'll take you right to your voicemail app. So whatever you want that double tap uh, press to open, you can change it following those steps. Now, let's move on to our next tip. I wanna show you um, this cool feature called the always on display. Now, when you power the phone off, there is a setting you can turn on that will basically show you the time. Now, this feature is called the always on display. Now, um, the way the default settings are uh, set up for the phone, you have to tap the screen one time to be able to see the time. Now, for some of you guys, you may like that, but for me, I personally want to see that clock all the time. It's nice to be able to glance down at your phone and always see the time. So, there's a way to change this in the settings so that Every time your screen goes off, you'll always be able to see the time and it's not gonna be a big drain on your battery. What we're gonna do, swipe down from the top of the screen, tap on the settings wheel. We're gonna swipe up and go to lock screen and then we're gonna go to always on display and go here and we're gonna just change the settings from tap to show to show always. Now, if I put the phone asleep, it's gonna automatically have my clock showing on the screen. I love this. And for those of you that you know find yourself in a meeting or in a long conversation, it's nice to be able to just simply glance at your phone and have the time right there for you. All right, for our next tip, I wanna show you how to turn on and use the one-handed mode feature. While this is a great phone, it's very long, and so it can be hard to reach the top of the screen to change settings. So you'll wanna turn on this feature called the one-handed mode. It's gonna make it easier for you to use the phone, you guessed it, with one hand. We're gonna swipe down from the top of the screen, upper right corner, go to the settings wheel, go to advanced features, and then go to one-handed mode, and we're going to turn this on first. Second, we're gonna tap on one-handed mode, and we're gonna change this from gesture to button. The gesture method is just not the easiest to use, so I personally just like to use the button function. Now, the way this works, all you have to do is tap the home button two times, and it'll automatically shrink your screen down. So if you're holding the phone, and hey, you're trying to reach the top of the screen, instead of having to reposition the phone in your hand, simply, tap the home button two times, it's gonna shrink the screen down and make it easier for you to swipe down from the top of the screen, just like this. And now you can easily interact with the phone with one hand. That is the one-handed mode. So, game changer just makes life so much easier. Now, on, in the same vein of being able to reach apps easier, I want you to notice something, or I wanna point out something that you've probably already noticed. When you open up these folders here, it can be a little challenging trying to reach the apps. Same thing when you're holding the phone with one hand and you're holding it kind of low in your hand. If I open this folder, it's a little hard to reach these top three apps at the top, but there is a uh, an app you can download that's gonna give you some new customization that's gonna make it easier for you to reach apps in folders. So here's what you're gonna do. 
go to the Galaxy Store app here on the home screen. And if yours is not on the home screen, no problem. Simply swipe up and you'll see the app right here on the screen. Tap on Galaxy Store. And at the top of the screen, tap on the magnifying glass and type in the word Good Lock. There's an app called Good Lock that gives you uh, access to all these other customizable features that you normally would never know about. Th this is an app um, that is, it, it basically it encompasses a lot of smaller apps that have been developed by different Samsung uh, developers and they basically give you access to all these extra features that you can tweak and adjust to customize your phone. So the app does a ton. I'm only gonna focus on just a few of the main features uh, for this specific tip I wanna show you, but this is another section I would tell you, spend some time, play around with it. Um, there's some cool things in here. Okay, so sorry, the app had to update itself. So it's updated. Now we're gonna go to the upper right corner, tap on the settings wheel, or excuse me, the magnifying glass, and we're gonna type in good lock. L-O-C-K, and we're going to download this app here, and it's going to install on the phone. Now, within this app, there are uh, sort of sub-apps or smaller apps that you're going to download. We're all done, let's tap here to open the app. And we're gonna, uh, so there's two sections here you'll find. There is makeup and there's life up. So make sure you're in the makeup section and we're gonna just swipe up here and go through some of the apps you see and look for the app that's called Home Up and tap on this little down arrow to download this particular app. Again, it's an app within an app. We're gonna download Home Up and this is gonna give us the extra customization when it comes to our home screen. Now, let's hit our back button. We're gonna go back to Good Lock and it should be at the top of the screen. Once you install an app within the app, it always shows up at the top. We're gonna to tap on Home Up, tap on Start, and allow to give it permission. And then we're gonna turn it on, and go to Folders, and turn on fo a pop-up folder like this. And now if I hit the Home button, if I tap on this folder, you're gonna notice it's gonna open, but it's gonna open much smaller so that you're able to reach the apps easier, like this. See that? So it actually opens much lower. So guess what, now I can reach all the apps in the folder. Game changer. And in case you forgot what it looks like, let's turn this off, and then let's open this folder, and you can see how much bigger it's open right now. And if we go back, turn it on again, and go to that folder, so much easier to now reach these apps. You guys, I don't know why this isn't automatically turned on, but Samsung, if you're watching this video and you're listening, turn this on stock. I don't know why this is not just a part of the OS. It should be. But anyway, now it's gonna be so much easier for you to open your folders using this uh, sub app within GoodLock. So, hey, you're welcome. Okay, so moving on to our next tip. This is something really important that I just want to briefly cover and it's something that you'll need to spend some time setting up for yourself. Um, it's super important and it's something that could save your life in the event of an emergency, so don't just skip past this section. This is setting up the emergency mode of your phone. In the event of an emergency, you'll be able to contact um, basically emergency contacts that you have set up in your phone. Um, and you'll be able to basically input your medical information into the phone. So let's just say you're diabetic and you haven't had you know, sugar and you fainted. Guess what? Someone could actually pick up your phone and they could actually go to the emergency mode and they could see your medical condition that's listed in the phone. Um, that's just one of many examples of ways that this could be helpful for you. But let me show you a couple of things you'll need to know in terms of using it and setting it up. So, first thing, swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe down again, let's tap on the power button here. Now, okay, this is what we're talking about, but before we go into it, I want you to make this change. Tap on side key settings, and come down to where it says press and hold, this is referring to the power button, 
change this from wake up Bixby to power off menu. That's the first thing. Now let's hit our back button. And now if I hold the power button, it's gonna take me to that menu. So that's the first thing. Super important, do that step first. The next thing, tap on emergency call. This is gonna take you to your emergency call section of the phone. And here, uh, if you had this open, you could easily call like your emergency contacts that you set up in the phone. So like for myself, I might have like my wife, my mom, my sister, my dad, my brother. Guess what, an emergency happens and I, I have to contact them very quickly to let them know that like I'm in danger or something's happening, guess what? All I have to do is hold my power button, tap emergency call, and I am right at my emergency contacts to be able to call them quickly to tell them I'm in trouble. I think that's super important and something every single person who has this phone should have set up. Now, here's the second thing, and this might be more relevant to some than others, but again, important to go over. If I tap on view medical information, in here I can have um, information about maybe um, different medical challenges that I have, so that let's say I'm about to faint, and guess what? No one is gonna know why I fainted and what's happening. If I had a few seconds and I could simply, you know, hold the power button, tap emergency call and tap on medical info. If you fainted and on your phone it's showing in your medical information, hey, this person is diabetic or this person has this condition. Now, if, if a um, medical personnel shows up, they would know how to treat you properly because they would know what's going on. So this is what the, the section looks like. Now to set it up, you need to go to your, hit the home button, swipe down, tap on the settings wheel, and in the settings, you'll need to go to the safety and emergency section of the phone and first tap on emergency contacts. And in here, you would just simply tap and start adding your contacts in, you know, again, specifically the contacts you would want to be on your emergency list. Okay. And let's go back. The second thing is go to medical info hit confirm, and here you can put in all the important information, who you are, what is your condition, what are your allergies, what are your current medications, blood type, medical notes, address, organ donor, everything. So now all of that is programmed into your phone. So hey, you're about to faint, you hold that power button, you tap emergency call, you call someone, hey, I'm, I'm lightheaded, I'm about to faint, I need you to come get me. And guess what, now that person knows you're in trouble, and it'll still be showing your medical information on the screen. Okay, now here is the last thing, and this is probably the most important thing, and it, it sort of supersedes some of the things I said before this. So the third thing is what is called emergency SOS. Now, tap here, so it's already enabled, but if you tap here, um, this is showing you, if you press the side button five times, it'll automatically trigger the emergency SOS feature. What this is gonna do is it's going to call 911 and it's going to share your information with your emergency contacts. So all the people that you have programmed into the phone, guess what? They are now going to get a text message or, or in fact, let's, let's turn it on. You obviously have to enable it first. Okay, so emergency sharing needs this information. So contacts, SMS, it's gonna send them a message uh, via SMS. It's going to send your location. Hey, where am I? And it's going to turn on the microphone and it's going to start recording what it hears. And then it's also giving some additional information. It's gonna record microphone, it's gonna record video. And basically it's just gathering information on what's happening right now. So now it's telling us, hey, add a contact in. Okay, so we'll add someone in here, go back to add. And let's say I'm gonna just tap on this random number here, hit done, and let's go back. So now it says, hey, send a message to your emergency contacts. Let them know you need help. Messages will include your location and a warning if your phone's almost out of battery. Message won't be sent if you've reached your limit. Obviously, that's if you have like, you know, a capped amount of text messages. And it says, hey, take a picture with the front and the rear camera, including the message. 
and it's gonna attach a five second audio recording of what's happening. So this is basically alerting your important people, hey, I'm in trouble, I need your help. Here's a picture, here's audio of what's happening right now and my location so you can come find me. So you're gonna hit start emergency sharing and it tells you and messages will be sent to your emergency contacts for up to 24 hours. So you will at least have some update information, you know, to know what's happening with that person. We're going to hit start. And that's it. So these are sort of the three things you need to set up to really make the most of the emergency SOS feature. So you're going to program in your emergency contacts. You're going to... Uh, input your medical information, and then you have to turn on emergency sharing. Doing these three things are setting you up so if there is an emergency, guess what? The people that you know and love are alerted and they can hopefully find you and help you. Okay, so let's try it really quickly so you know exactly what it's gonna look like. One, two, three, four, five. So it does count down just, just in case. Just in case you have hit it by accident, it will start making noise and count down and let you know to turn it off it was, if it was an accident. And if not, it's basically it has 10 seconds before it's going to send out that blast and it's going to take that picture and record the audio. So I spent a lot of time on that, but I just, man, you know what? I'm so happy that Samsung is really adding in these extra features because like this could save someone's life. And so I want to encourage you, whoever's watching this video, set this up so that in the case of an emergency, you at least, you know, have a way of communicating with your loved ones that you're in trouble and hopefully they can come and help you. All right, moving on to our next tip. We have just a couple left. I want to show you how to put your phone in the aggressive battery saving mode. I think this is super important. So you guys may have noticed when your phone drops below, I want to say 15%, it will ask you if you want to turn on the battery saving mode and that will hopefully help stretch your battery. Now guess what? Sometimes you are in an environment where you're not going to be able to charge your phone for a long time. And if that is the case, you should not wait a very long time before you turn on power saving mode. You should turn it on much sooner so your phone is already trying to save battery. So to do this, it's super easy. Swipe down from the top of the screen. Swipe down again, find your power saving button. You're gonna hold down on it for one second. It's gonna take you to your menu, your power saving menu. And it's already gonna have these three things enabled by default. Now, normally, simply turning it on is gonna help save your battery a lot, okay? Um, so you just simply hit this button. This is how you manually turn on power saving mode and it's already going to help with stretching your battery. Now if you find yourself in an emergency where you need, where you may not be able to charge for days, like for a much longer period of time and you need your phone to be on the most aggressive battery saving mode it can be, you need to enable this last option called limit apps and home screen. By turning this on, it's going to vastly stretch your battery that it could potentially stretch it over a couple of days. But you've got to turn this on and then you're going to turn this on. This is going to put your phone in the most aggressive battery saving mode that is possible. And it's really going to make sure that your phone is going to stay on for a longer period of time. So wanted to point that out. This is a super important thing, I think. Okay. Here is our very last tip, and this will end our video, and I hope you guys have found an incredible amount of value in this video, and if you have, please bump that like button down below. That's how you get this video to reach more people, and it's also how you can support the channel as well. So thank you in advance if you haven't already done that. Okay, so the very last tip, this is one I think is super cool. So here's a website. And guess what? There's a cool feature with Google Assistant where you can have it read a web page to you by doing this. You're going to hold down on this home button here for one second. And then when the microphone starts listening, you're going to say read out loud. And it's going to read the web page to you just like this. 
Read out loud. So it takes a few seconds and it'll begin reading. Now we just have to turn our volume up. Domesticated species of goat antelope typically kept as livestock. It now, was domesticated from the wild goat of Southwest Asia. You can pause it. You can change the speed here. Maybe you want it to read a little bit faster, a little bit slower. And then and hit the Easter button. Goat. The goat is a member of the animal family Bobidae. You can also family. click out of it, it and it'll to continue range. to read it to you. There are over 300 distinct breeds of goat. And that's it. So this is just a specific feature within Google uh, Assistant that will allow you to read web pages. Now, for reference, it only works on web pages. It does not work on um, email. Unless you open up the email app through the web, then you could probably get it to read an email to you. But unfortunately, it doesn't work in any other app except for Google Chrome if you're on a web page. So just keep that in mind. So. That is it. We have come to the end of our video. This was a long video, but I hope, again, you got a lot of value out of it. If you haven't already done so, please go to the comment section down below and let me know what was your favorite tip that I went over. I always love to hear your feedback and it helps to inform future videos that I make. So take a minute, leave that comment. I appreciate that. If you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. Take care and as always, have a good one.